Hi, this is Naomi with Sword and Steel, and today we are going to be checking out the heroes of these new kits called Dawnbringers. They are regiments of renown, and there are Maggotkin of Nurgle, which include the Putrid Blight Kings and the Pusquoil Blight Lords that we have seen before, but what we're going to check out today is this brand new model called the Harbinger of Decay and what options he has. And then we also have Flesh Eater Quartz Jerian's Delegation, which is another regiment of renown that includes the quite old Crypt Ghouls, uh, Crypt Horrors and Crypt Flares, which you could build um, six of these uh, six of these or s six of these or three and three though the regiment of renown says that you need to build one of each and then we're going to be checking out specifically the marrow scroll herald miniature and then there's this guy which is the fire slayers fjords uh, flame bears it comes with a volkite berserkers and Orc Hearthguard or Hearthguard Berserkers, either or. Um, you have to build one of each of them to be part of the Regiment of Renown. And the new miniature that we're looking at today is the Grimhold Exile. We're going to be looking at both um, what it looks like its sculpt as well as going over its war scroll. And then lastly we have this guy which is actually really nice right now because um, as at the point of the video anyway, all of these models are not currently available online. So this would be a nice way to get them all at the same time. Gloom Spike gets Braggots, Bustle Snatches. So it has a Squig Herd, it has a Gabapalooza, and it has a Squig Hoppers. And the new model is a Rabble Rouser, which is what we'll be looking at today. These can, of course go in as additional models for your army if you have any of these armies, but they are regiments of renown, which means that you can use these basically as a bunch of allies for your army. If Maggotkin of Nurgle would be for any chaos army, Flesh Eater Quartz would be for any death army, Fire Slayers would be for any order army, and the Gloom Spike Kits would be for any destruction army. But let's have a look at these models themselves. This one is called a Harbinger of Decay, and he has two weapon options. It's either a scythe or a bell, so we'll get into that as soon as I read his war scroll. But he also has three different heads to choose from. This one with the one horn and chainmail. This one with all the antlers and this one with the mismatching horns. So you have a couple of heads for your extra models. And as you can see, you can keep him separate from his base so that you can paint him. Can you keep the rider separate from the horse? No, you can't. They are completely together in this one. So you may have a little bit of difficulty getting at all of the different details, but don't worry, you can do it and you can just slap on some DK if you didn't do something that you're happy with. He's really nice looking though. If you were to have the Harbinger of Decay, the Putrid Blight Kings, and the Puscoil Blight Lords unit in a Chaos Army, you can subtract one from hit rolls for attacks made with missile weapons that target a unit in this Regiment of Renown, and units in this Regiment of Renown have a ward of 5 plus. In addition, at the start of your hero phase, you can heal one wound allocated to each unit in this Regiment of Renown. I am not one for Maggot can of Nurgle, they are so creepy, but, but, um, I don't know, I might be able to sway myself to have them in with some corn, maybe. In the Regiment of Renowned, the Harbinger of Decay, Preacher Blight Kings, and Pascoil Blight Lords are 590 points. The Harbinger of Decay by himself is 190. And he has a movement of 8 inches, 7 wounds, 3 saves, 8 bravery. He has the Plague Scythe or a Doom Bell. If you're carrying the Plague Scythe, he has a 2 inch range, 2 attacks, 3 plus hit, 3 plus wound, run minus 2, 3 damage. He also carries a Grim Rot Sword, which is 1 inch range, 2 attacks, 3 plus hit, 3 plus to wound, run minus 1, and d3 damage. 
His steed also does a fly blown bite, which is one inch range, four attacks, four plus to hit, four plus to wound, rend zero, and one damage. He has three abilities. One is if he's carrying the doom bells, but the first one is shutter blight at the start of the combat phase or battle shock phase. Pick one enemy unit within three inches of this unit and roll a dice. On a three plus, that unit cannot issue or receive commands in that phase. So that's handy. If he's wielding the bell rather than the plague scythe, he has this toll of the doom bell. If this unit carries a doom bell once per battle in your hero phase, it can toll the doom bell. If it does so, enemy units within 14 inches of this unit, when it tolls the doom bell, are filled with despair until your next hero phase. The following effects apply to a unit filled with despair. Subtract one inch from the move characteristic of that unit, subtract one from run rolls for that unit, and subtract one from charge rolls for that unit. I still haven't decided whether I want to use the plague scythe, which is just a nasty little weapon or the doom bell to really mess up the movement for one round and then because he's a priest he has a chant which is omens of decay is a prayer that has an answer value of three and a range of 14 inches if answered pick one enemy unit within range subtract the current battle round from that unit's bravery characteristic until your next hero phase the next one is Flesh Eater Quartz model called the Marrow Scroll Herald. There is only one way to build him and he does not have any additional bits after you build him. There is one little area, one bit that was a bit strange to attach, it didn't quite make sense how to attach it and here's a video of how it's supposed to be on. So I hope that helps you if you found difficulty as well. Uh, I kept him unattached from his base so that you could see the very cool little corpse that you get as part of his base. He's completely separate from his base, so it's up to you whether you want to have this corpse underneath his foot. And yes, he is holding two dripping ribs, obviously taken from the guy underneath him. His regiment of renown says, Units in this regiment of renown can run and still charge later in the turn. Units in this regiment of renown have a ward of 6 plus. It's 460 for those four units or 115 for the Marrow Scroll Herald by himself. And the Marrow Scroll Herald has a 6 inch movement, 5 wounds, 5 plus saving throw, and 10 bravery. He's wielding a bone scythe, which has a 2 inch range, 5 attacks, 3 plus to hit, 3 plus to wound, run minus 1, 2 damage, which is nice. And he has two abilities. First is the King's Entreaty. At the end of the charge phase, you can pick one enemy unit within three inches of this unit and say that this unit will offer it an infected bone. If you do so, your opponent must choose whether that enemy unit accepts or refuses the bone. If it refuses, the strike first effect applies to friendly flesh eater quartz units within three inches of this unit until the end of the following combat phase. If it accepts, the enemy unit becomes infected for the rest of the battle roll 2d6 before an infected enemy unit issues or receives a command, attempts to cast a spell, or chants a prayer. Make the roll before the action is carried out. If the roll is greater than that unit's bravery characteristic, that unit cannot perform that action in that phase. Can you imagine being on the battlefield, though, with this guy charging in and handing you out a bone, and you're like, I don't want to touch the bone, but the surprise causes all of the flesh eater quartz around you to attack you first. Or if you grab the bone without thinking, you're now infected and have to possibly miscast a command, a spell, or a prayer. It's just it's such a ridiculous idea. <sighs> Oh, all right, and then his other ability is don't shoot the messenger. This unit is not visible to enemy models while it is wholly within six inches of five or more other friendly flesh eater court models. It's such a cool little model, I have got to say. And he's a courtier, so the crypt ghouls and the crypt flares and the crypt horrors all care about being within pr the presence of a courtier. So he's one of those. Okay, the next one is a rabble rouser and he is lovely there's only one way to assemble him he doesn't have any other options and you can keep this piece separate from him 
so that you can paint all of his bits and bobs and then you can glue it into place afterwards. To use this regiment of renowned, the entire thing is 500 points. The rabble rouser, if you just wanted to use them with your gloom spike gits, is 100 points. And the regiment of renown is, if a unit in this regiment of renown receives the redeploy command, any other friendly units in this regiment of renown within six inches of that unit can immediately make a d6 move, but they must finish that move more than three inches from all enemy units and cannot shoot later in that turn. Not that I imagine these guys would be shooting very much. Secret tunnels. Instead of setting up the units in this regiment of renown on the battlefield, you can place them to one side and say they are navigating secret tunnels. If you do so at the start of your first hero phase, at the start of your first hero phase, mind, you can set up all of these units wholly within six inches of the edge of the battlefield and more than nine inches from all enemy units. The units you set up cannot move in the following movement phase. If you were to just use him, the Rabble Rouser, he has a five inch movement, five wounds, four plus to save, and five bravery. He has a Moonsickle and Basha. The Moonsickle and Basha has a one inch range, five attacks, three plus to hit, three plus to wound, red minus one, and d3 damage. So that's a nice little melee weapon. He has mushroom stuffed bat squigs, which sounds hilarious. Once per battle in your shooting phase, you can say that this unit will deploy its bat squigs. If you do so, pick three different enemy units within 12 inches of this unit. Each of those enemy units suffer D3 mortal wounds, which is quite nasty. I mean, it's only the one time of that. So that's quite nasty. And then he has squig skull armor. This unit has a ward of four plus while it is more than six inches from all enemy units. I guess that's what I'll want to do then his squig skull armor but now he's really good in melee so i guess he wouldn't really want to do that well let's see what else he can do uh his last ability is get going your gets while any friendly units with this ability are on the battlefield when you pick a friendly monster to move in the movement phase you can say that it is goaded until the end of the turn while a friendly monster is goaded it can run and still charge later in the turn however a goaded Unit must finish any kind of move except pile-in moves closer to a unit with this ability than it was at the start of the move. <laughs> okay. In addition, each time a goaded unit finishes a move, each friendly unit with this ability within three inches of that unit suffers d6 mortal wounds. Roll separately for each. Funny. They get angry at him and start chasing after them. That's cute. The lore. Okay. And then we have... Grimhold, Exile, and his Regiment of Renown. Altogether, that would make 540 points. The Grimhold, Exile himself is 140 points if you just want to play him in your Fire Slayer's army. And enemy monsters within three inches of any units in this Regiment Renown cannot contest objectives. That's quite nasty. And then units in this Regiment of Renown cannot be picked when your opponent carries out a monstrous rampage. So that's, I like that. It's pretty nice. And Grimhold Exile himself is a four inch movement, as you would expect for a dwarf or dwarden. Four inch movement, six wounds, four plus save, nine bravery. He's wielding fire rune hammers. The fire rune hammers have a one inch range, five attacks, three plus to hit, three plus to wound, rent minus two, and two damage each. That's quite nice. Last of the lodge fire. Once per battle, when you pick this unit to fight, instead of piling in and attacking with it, you can say that it will unleash the last of the lodge fire if you do so. Pick one enemy unit within one inch of this unit and roll a number of dice equal to the wounds characteristic of that enemy unit. For each four plus, that enemy unit suffers a mortal wound. So pick one within one inch, roll a number of dice equal to the wounds characteristic of that enemy unit. Hmm. For each four plus, the enemy unit suffers a mortal wound, so you'd really want to have it attack a big bad guy, which could be quite nice. For each four plus, 50% chance for a mortal wound per dice. Mm. And then his next ability is Honor to Grimnir. Once per battle in your hero phase, this unit can raise this battle cry. If it does, friendly Fire Slayer units that do not have a mount and are wholly within six inches of this unit when it raises this battle cry are inspired until the end of the turn. 
Inspired units can run and still charge later in the turn, which is always nice for Fire Slayers. It's once per battle he can do that. And then his last ability is Living Legacy. While this unit is within three inches of another friendly unit that has three or more models, this unit has a ward of four plus. So he protects himself. Oh yes, and there's only one way to build him and you use everything that you have on the sprue. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. Make certain to like and subscribe to the channel. Hitting that subscribe button. I hope you had a fantastic day. It's nice and warm here, so I am so happy right now. And um, if you had any questions whatsoever about any of the models below, I've got all the assemble, uh, all the assembly guide for the other options. I will be assembling them at some point. Probably just put some. Uh, put them in some uh, paint videos so I hope you enjoy that if you had any questions about any of that just make certain to comment below so the rules for all of these regiments and currently the war scrolls probably going to be available on the Warhammer app soon but at the moment you can get them in the Dawn Bringers book that is coming out at the same time as them but if you wanted just the plain rules for regiments of renown they have been spread out throughout various uh, war, uh, white dwarf magazines. So I imagine that the rules are very straightforward. You basically stick your regiment of renown into your army and it does it and it ignores the restrictions on how many points you can have um, normally for an ally. These ones, as you saw, are more than the regular restricted points, but they are an exception to the rule. So uh, pretty straightforward to add them into your army, should you wish to. And that's all for me today. So I hope you have a great one. Bye. Thank you as always to the patrons and YouTube members that support the channel. Really appreciate your support as always. Hope you're having a fantastic day in summer. And happy Independence Day to all those US citizens out there. So creepy. That guy has a bell inside his stomach. And that guy has a nurgling inside his stomach. <laughs> Don't mind me just being creeped out by the miniatures. I can't handle Maggot King of Nurgle. Thankfully I do know someone who adores Maggot King of Nurgle so I'm gonna be giving it to him. I also have someone who is getting into Doom at, in Gloom Spike Gift so I imagine she is gonna take these off my hands pretty easily. I don't think she has Gobble Palooza on so. Mm-hmm.